I am Chef Cho coming to you from Lincoln Culinary Institute in Shelton, Connecticut. It is Wednesday night and it is our night we're making Katashu. My, my class is with us tonight and I'm here and I'm going to go over some tips for the home cook. Right? So tonight we're going to be making Katashu. The most important thing is making the time right, to make your recipes. Right? Uh, having no interruptions and using a recipe that you feel comfortable using. It could even be a family recipe. Uh, making sure that you have a recipe where you read the recipe, you have all the ingredients in front of you, and also that they're measured accurately. Uh, I use scales. We use scales here. You can also use measuring cups. You can use any device that you want to use. Okay. Uh, some of the other things is equipment like sheet trays, parchment paper, setting up transparencies. All these little things have to be ready. Having your pots ready, your spoon. Gallon bag, all right. In class, we use a pastry bag with a tip, all right. A pastry bag with a tip is something you can also purchase, right? They sell them at Michaels. I think they sell them at Ocean Job Lot, places like that also. Okay. Having a mixer, I don't know if anybody has a KitchenAid mixer with a paddle attachment, right? All these little things make it easier. And tonight we're going to use what we call an induction burner. My class has never seen this before, but we had a chance to look at it. Uh, I'm using the stainless steel pan, and I'm actually going to make the dough on top. I want to use a heavy bottom pot so the uh, dough doesn't burn. And I want to make a recipe you know, that I like making. I love making tao chu. So I'm, my mother's side is all Italian, so I grew up making uh, to chu with uh, one of my aunts. Uh, Tilly. So what I'm going to do guys, I'm going to get you guys started here and show you how to do it. All right, so I got my salt, my sugar, I'm using all water. You can use milk and water, you can use all milk. Okay, so I'm going to give this a little stir. While I'm doing that, I also have my ovens on. Reheating your ovens, that's something we forget to do uh, when we're, you know, busy. We're running around and we have kids and family and all the stuff's going on. We forget to turn the oven on. Anybody ever forget to turn the oven on? Yes, sir. What about you guys? Have you ever forgot? Yes. That's what happens. So you have to be really organized, okay? That's half the battle. You have to want to do it. And what you want to do as a beginner, as a home cook, is you want to make recipes that you feel you can do. Uh, you know, like setting you know small goals for yourself in, in life. It's making recipes that don't overwhelm you, something that you feel you can, that your family and friends can enjoy. So my class and I were talking about how to shoot last night, right? And I have one of my students here, Don. Do you want to tell them what your favorite dessert is? My favorite dessert is how to shoot. Eclairs. Eclairs. So what's in an eclair? Tell them. Cream, cream and dog. Uh, this is for you, uh, for a dog, and I support you on chocolate. Ah, are they low calorie? Of course not. <laughs> That's why they're good. Now, you can buy them at BJ's in the supermarket. I don't know what they cost because I never buy them. Uh, but you can buy them if you want to, but they're not going to have the taste. Uh, of something that's fresh and that you made. Anything that's made at home is always made with love, right? Made with love and something that you made, which makes it special. Now, if you make it by yourself the first time and it comes out really good, what do we usually do? Make it again, right? So maybe the second time you make it, that's another tip is making with friends, family, uh, also maybe making it uh, with other people so you can share it and then maybe do like a, a patachute or eclair swap or something like that. You can also uh, use these puffs, not only for cream puffs, you can also make the fritterals and you can put vanilla ice cream in them. Uh, anybody here, we learned about that, right guys? All right, chocolate sauce on the outside, a little vanilla or maybe whipped cream in the middle, okay? And there you go, you got a great dessert. So, we're just about at that time where I'm gonna add the flour. Now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna need a wooden spoon. Don't use a metal spoon. What will happen is you will scrape the pan. And what will happen is, you know, sometimes, you know, you get little bits and pieces from the metal from the pan. You don't want that. You also want it has a heavy bottom so your dough doesn't burn, okay? I'm just about ready here, folks. You can also look at the top in the mirror, okay? 
I'm putting in the flour all at once. Now, as beginners, you want to use a spoon that's kind of small, not the big gigantic one that you can't even stir with. And what you want to do is you want to go like the clock, like I'm doing. Now, once it starts to get hot, which it's doing, you can always take it off the stove, right? That's another little thing. People get overwhelmed and they say, oh, it's burning, it's burning. Take it off the stove, don't be afraid. So I'm gonna go back in, mix it up, and it's gonna look like mishmash, right? All curdled. It's gonna to come together, here it comes. We're starting to form a ball. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna make sure all that flour, folks, is incorporated. You guys see that? You're gonna to start to smell something. Who smells something? I smell it. What do you smell? You smell the flour cooking. Excellent, you have to do that. Also, that's so you know it's cooked. And the reason why is so the dough comes out a nice texture. The goal is that we create a uniform smooth what? Dough. Dough, good team. Now, we also talked about film on the side of the pan, all right? This little bit of film, almost like when you have a windshield, right? That you can't get clean inside. You're gonna start to see this little bit of film, right? Creating inside the pan. That tells you the dough's almost ready. Now, the mixer should be plugged in. You should make sure it works. Uh-oh, if it doesn't work, you're in trouble. Now, you don't have to use a stand-up mixer. You can also use um, an eight, uh, the beaters like a hand mixer, okay? You don't have to spend a lot of money. Now you can also do it by hand. Right? You get somebody strong to help you make it, and there you go. All right, folks, we're almost there. You guys see what we have so far? Any questions? Home viewers, any questions? It should be the parachute hotline here, right? All right, I'm gonna shut it off. Next thing I'm gonna do, all right, I'm gonna look. I see that little bit of film on the side. I smell it, it's a ball, all right? This dough looks really good. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the cover off of my eggs, which I've already cracked ahead of time. My mixer's plugged in. I've already checked that it works. Let's make sure it's plugged in. No, it's not, okay? One second, folks. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my dough and put it right into the bowl. One of the things they tell us with our recipe here, okay folks, is that we want to make sure that the dough is 140 degrees. You can use a thermometer. Calibrating it is very easy. You buy one that has a calibration nut and the dough should be 140 degrees. All right folks, tell me, is that 140 degrees or less? What does it say? 100. How much? It says 140. So what I'm going to do, folks, is I'm going to simply, right, take it, mix it for about one minute, and cool it. Now, how can I cool it without a mixer? You would have to stir it a little more by hand with your spoon. Okay. I get the mixer on. Steam coming out. That's what you want. You want all the steam to come out. That's going to cool the dough. And I'm going to shut it off. I'm going to go back in. I'm going to go check it again. Take my thermometer, go right where there's a lot of the dough, right in the middle. And I'm going to check. The reason why we do this is so the eggs don't curdle the dough, right? And it would be, you know, wouldn't be desirable. Okay, we got, we got magic. Here we go. Now, as the mixer's going, you put it, put it on slow. Or if you're mixing it by hand, one egg at a time. Using a measuring cup is another good tip. Why? Because it's easy. You can just put it in and use a handle. It's very hard to use a bowl. Sometimes you feel like you might be, you know, mix, not getting, getting everything in the mixer. You don't want that. You want to make your life easy. Sometimes you have to think it through. I think buying the ingredients the day before, setting the time to make the recipe, and then making it the next day or over the weekend when no one's around is a very good way to do things because then you feel like you're not overwhelmed, you've got everything in the house, and you're not running out to buy stuff. Like that.
Thanksgiving morning, right? <laughs> all right. Back to what we're doing here, folks. So we're almost done with the dough. I'm going to show you my transparencies. Alexis, you want to add the rest of the eggs one at a time? This is going to be one of my little transparencies. I did them by hand for egg clear shape. And then I'm going to put parchment on top. And then we also have the paint pots ready, okay? That way I'm organized. Now, what I'm going to do for the home cook is I'm going to put some of my dough in a gallon pastry bag because I don't have I use the freezer bags that are really sturdy. I use the block, I guess for a rod. Endorse them, whatever, celebrate. Mixer, bring it down, come down. You want to scrape, one more time. You want to come in here, you want to scrape your dough. You want to make sure everything is mixed thoroughly. Right, so you create a smooth dough. Don't put all the dough in the bag at once. It's a lot easier to work with half a bag than a full bag because this dough is stiff, right? And it'll be harder to, to pipe or put the dough on the sheet trays. Okay, so as a beginner, you also want to set up maybe some paper towel or plate. You don't have paper towels, some kind of dish or something where you can put your dirty equipment on top of it to keep your station clean. Okay, here's our dough. Then we're gonna do the test that we talked about last night. We're gonna do the triangle. Okay, what I'm gonna do here, folks, is just test it. All right, do I have a triangle? Yes, I do, like a V. That's the test, guys, to let me know that the dough is correct. Now. When I went to culinary school, baking wasn't the, one of the things that I went for, for the cooking. But little did I know that I would be teaching baking, and I really like it. I enjoy doing it. All right, let's see. Sam, come on over here. You're gonna help me. You're gonna put some of this dough, a little bit of dough in the bag for me. There you go. So you can't do it by yourself. Don, can you give me a measuring cup? Yep. Show everybody. Get ahead. Okay. You can do this. This is another trick for the home cooks, right? Look at that. You don't even need anybody to help you. Go ahead, Sam. You can do it by yourself. Right there. Yep. Just like that, folks. So, so you can use a little measuring cup, right? And that will actually hold the dough in place, okay? All right. That's good for now. Mm -hmm. Yep. There's some action here. All right. I'm going to actually bring it down. That. See, it's going to be a lot more manageable. If I fill this bag up all the way, what will happen is it will ooze out. You'll have, you know, a big mess. Now, the reason why I put parchment paper on top is because this uh, magic marker could contaminate the dough. So when we put the parchment paper on top, it's just as a guide. Okay? We're not going to eat it. Okay? So that I'm going to do is I'm going to snip about that much. You can find a lot of YouTube uh, videos. Um, when I'm making products, I do like to wear gloves. I certainly wear them also when I'm making the dough. I'll tell you this, I like to wear gloves for many reasons. First of all, for being clean, and the other for right, making sure that my guests, all right, get a very nice product. Right? I don't get anybody sick. Some, could somebody get a little uh, mise cup? with a little water so I can show everybody how to get rid of the little dot. Now I'm going to make very small ones. I'm following the little hole. You see that? It's so easy to follow the guidelines. Alright, we're going to go a little more. Okay. So mine are going to be small. I'm almost done. Thank you. Now, when you get these little, little air pockets, that can happen. What I do I'm going to take a little water and I'm going to go right on top just like a couple of the videos showed us to do. The water is going to repel the dough because the dough actually has fat in it and the fat tonight is butter. Okay, so these are just about ready to go into the oven. 
We're gonna bake these at 400 degrees for 10 minutes. Uh, and then we're gonna take them and put them in another and bake them for another 25 minutes at 325 at home. If you wanna just keep your oven at probably, I'd say 350, you could probably bake them for about 45 minutes. And these will be good to go. And I'm gonna show you guys, so we made some eclairs. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the bag down a little bit. Once again, you can buy these pastry bags at chef stores. You can buy them at Michael's. I've seen them there. I've even seen them at Ocean State Job Lot. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you by yourself, with nobody helping you, you can actually take this dough and you can actually, all right, get it right into the bag, okay, just like that. Okay, that gives me a head start. Or, if you feel comfortable, another way is just holding it, open like this, okay, and then going in. Okay, very simple. I'm not gonna do all of it, that's okay. Sometimes you gotta hold it. I'm good with that. Thank you. All right, you go in. I'm just gonna make the company, line it up. Now, the cream puff is a, a shape like a ball. The eclair is like a shape like your index finger, okay? So what I do is I snip the bag. I'm gonna use a, a flat round tip, all right? There's different kinds of tips you can use. So this tip does not have any serration on it. Okay, so what I do is I bring it, I'll start over here at the top and I'll go like this. Now I'll use one hand. Because I'm comfortable. Okay? One more time. Go watch what I show you guys. Ready? Watch go round and then go right in the middle like that. And then go back up. One more time. Go round. So you're going to make the circle or the oval and you're going to go right back up.